Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all here today. And as we enter in and get started this morning, just want to take a moment and uh, just uh, thank everybody for being here. Uh, a couple of announcements just as we come in today. Uh, as uh, we want to make sure that we just uh, respect each other's spaces. And uh, we've been doing that the last month now, and everything's been going really well. So we uh, just want to keep that up. Also, if you have to use a restroom during uh, the service time, if you notice others in the restroom, just make sure we don't trample over people and give everybody their space they need uh, to, uh, to get around today. Upon exiting at the end of the service, uh, we've been asking everybody if they will, uh, in an orderly fashion, distancing, keeping distance around each other, uh, exit outside and then do all of the greeting and fellowship at the end of service outside in the open air. It's a beautiful day out today. I know everybody will enjoy being out there today. So uh, also, uh, as we open in prayer today, we want to keep uh, two families in prayer. One is... Uh, the Schaefer family, Teresa, uh, Sister Carol Brewer passed away yesterday uh, at, the, uh, at the hospital. Teresa took her into McLaren there, and, and uh, we don't know everything or all that's happened, but we know that uh, through the course of the day there, uh, Sister Carol uh, left this world and went to heaven yesterday. And then this morning, uh, Brother Pete Silva was in the hospital, and they sent him home. And then this morning, uh, Brother Pete, he passed away uh, uh, just a couple hours ago. So please keep both of those families in your prayers this morning, and uh, we need to be praying the Lord to give them strength to help during this time. It's already been a lot of restrictions on families uh, to deal with uh, losing loved ones, and uh, we pray for all these families uh, here at Glad Tidings that uh, are, are having now to cope with uh, losses during this pandemic. So uh, let's all stand together this morning. We're going to open with a word of prayer. And as we open together in prayer, uh, we're just going to believe the Lord just to meet your need today. Uh, what need uh, is in your life? We're just going to believe the Lord can strengthen us, give us his peace in our life today. Amen. Uh, let's all pray as we uh, start our service this morning. Heavenly Father, we gather before you today. And Lord, we're one thankful that uh, we're able to be here in your house today. Lord, I thank you that as we've gathered in from around the area, uh, Lord, we're here worshiping you. That's our heart's uh, decision today, Father. Our agenda, what drove us into this place today, Lord, was saying this is your time. And we pray, Father, that you'll use it, minister uh, in this house today. I pray, Father. Father, for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit to work in hearts and lives in this service today. And Father, we just thank you that you are moving in our midst. Lord, I pray today that you'll be with the Schaefer family and with the Silva family today, God, that you would strengthen them and help them during this crisis that they're facing. And Lord, I thank you that you are great and mighty and worthy to be praised today. And so, Father, we've entered in here now uh, to give you the uh, to give you celebration celebration and glory from our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, before we sing today, one other announcement the ushers asked me to share is we're going to receive communion. We have the pre-filled disposable cups in the foyer. Uh, upon entering, if you didn't pick one up, we're going to do communion together during the service. Uh, we'd ask you to just make your way back to the foyer here during this first song uh, and uh, pick one up if you hadn't already got one. Then just hold on to it. We're going to take it at the end of the service together. Amen. All right, let's sing this morning. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving.
Let's give him praise in the house this morning. Amen. Let's all lift our hands together this morning. We receive that word. Father, we thank you for the word that you speak into our life today. And Father, I thank you that as we uh, call upon you, you are faithful. You will show us these things, Father, in our life, how we need to walk, where we need to go, Father, how we need to be in this world, Father, Christians living for you. And Lord, I thank you today for speaking that word of life into us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just keep calling out to the Lord this morning. Whatever needs you have in your life today, the Lord is faithful and just. He'll answer you. And uh, let's keep uh, joining in worship as we continue praying and worshiping. Go ahead. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us worship our
Hallelujah, he's my God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Oh, sing it with us. Take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for 
Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands together this morning. If you believe God's going to be able, God is able, and God is turning your captivity around today. If he's going to turn what is meant for evil against you to good, let's just praise him right now and thank him that what was set before you as an ambushment, he's turning it right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, this morning that, Father, you are sustaining us in this place this morning. I thank you, Father, that there is no weapon that's formed against us that shall prosper. And I praise you today, Jesus, that, Lord, that as we see, Lord, circumstances and and we see situations father as we see the problems and we see pandemics and epidemics we see pain and we see suffering and we see the just the day that's set before us i know god that the enemy would just seek to destroy him the enemy seeks to devour her but i thank you lord that you're turning it around for our good in this place today i thank you lord this morning that greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world i thank you lord this morning that it's not by might and it's not by power it's not by what we conjure in our human ingenuity but god it's by your spirit that you empower us and embolden us and you strengthen us oh for the work at hand and we praise you this morning jesus oh it's yes and amen in heaven today and we thank you lord for it in jesus name come on lift your hands and worship him and thank him that was what was meant for harm against you is being turned around this morning weeping endures for a night but it's checking out because joy comes in the morning and we thank you lord it's turning in this place today it's turning in our life today it's turning in our heart today i thank you for the stirring of the holy spirit in our lives this morning hallelujah jesus what was meant for evil is going to be turned to my good in jesus name oh in jesus name come on praise him 30 more seconds just give him your very best this morning and pour it out before him today and thank him this morning yes jesus Lord, we praise you today, and we give you our best praise this morning, and we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving us, and thank you for keeping us, and thank you for delivering us, and thank you for touching us, and thank you for giving us strength when we're weak, and thank you for giving us bread when we're hungry, and thank you for giving us water when we're thirsty, and thank you, Lord, for being our Savior, and thank you, Lord, for being our Deliverer. You're our King of Kings, and you're our Lord of Lords, and we praise you in here today. Hey! Hey, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we praise you. Oh, the atmosphere's changing. Let's stir it up in our hearts today. Atmosphere of fear and doubt have to leave when there's an atmosphere of praise and faith, and we thank you, Lord, for it. Devil, you've been talk, touching our minds too long. You've been panicking our situations too long. And I thank you, Lord, that we bind it in Jesus' name. Correction coming in our house today. What was doubt and what's fear? I thank you, Lord. We receive the word and we prophesy it in faith, God, that what was doubt and unbelief is turning to faith and praise. And God, I thank you this morning for you sending that in our life. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, amen. Praise God. What was meant for evil is going to be turned for your good. The correction God wants to send in your house today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Why do you come
Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands and just receive it. Lord, thank you for speaking today. Lord, we receive that exhortation in our heart today. Lord, it strengthens us. It empowers us, Lord. I thank you there's victory in this place today. I thank you, God, that by, by your hand, Lord, you've got us. And you've got a mighty right hand to power. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit descended on the day of Pentecost, and we celebrated that last week. The power coming from heaven to earth and empowering believers. Today, the week after the Pentecost Sunday is traditionally Trinity Sunday, where we thank God that He's our Father who sits on the throne, has a mighty right hand of strength, that nothing that can't, comes against Him will ever overthrow Him. That Jesus is our Savior, that He came to this earth and accomplished that which He set to do, and that we have a Savior in Jesus, and we have a Holy Spirit that's been dispatched from heaven, the third person of the Godhead that now lives inside of us on the earth. Uh, the, empowering believers today and we celebrate these facts in our life today and we tarry. It's all because those disciples in the upper room obeyed the promise of the Father. They went, they tarried, they prayed, they sought God and God infused them with the power. Amen. And so that's our that's our format for today. Just seek the Lord and let him fill you this morning. Amen. Tarry in his presence. Amen. Thank you Lord for your goodness and your mercy. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's all pray together today before we change here. And let's, we've heard the word of the Lord. We've seen this different things this morning. We've received it in our spirit. Now let's just agree that these things will be so. Amen. Father, I thank you that, Lord, you're meeting needs today. I thank you, Lord, today that as we've gathered into this sanctuary, that, Father, you're right here in our presence today. And that, Father, you're meeting needs and I thank you, God, you're familiar with our circumstances. And so, Lord, today, the needs that are facing our lives and in our hearts, Lord, I just pray for strength. I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for encouragement. Lord, I pray that you empower us, God, that we can run through troops and leap over walls because, Father, it may seem like barricades here. But God, nothing's impossible with you. And so, Father, today I pray, Father, for our lost loved ones, Father, that they be saved and they draw into the cross of Jesus. I pray, Father, for a deeper walk in you. I pray, Father, for more of Holy Spirit baptisms being poured out, Father, in believers' lives. I pray, God, for you to work mightily in Jesus' name. And Father, we stand in here not in fear, but in faith not in doubt, but in praise, thanking you, God, that even though the natural may look one way, we walk by faith, we operate by faith, and not by sight, and we praise you for it, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, praise God. Well, you may be seated this morning, hallelujah, what a great morning in his presence, amen. In his presence is fullness of life. There's peace forevermore. 
and uh, there's joy and hope. Amen. So uh, this morning, thank you, musicians. What a wonderful job. And uh, as they go down, uh, we just uh, celebrate uh, all the worship and that they've led us into the house of the Lord today. We're going to receive this morning's offering. And maybe some of you, it's your first time here <clears throat> back from, uh, from March when it was our last service. At the end of each row, you'll see a container. Those are our new offering containers for this short period of time while we're doing this. And while, while we're uh, having this, uh, these situations uh, going on around us, we're using these offering containers. And if you would like to give digitally up on the screen, there's a way for you to use your cell phone and text. And you can text to give that way. Or you can uh, use an envelope. And you can just put your offering envelope inside of those containers. And then uh, the usher, as they walk by, the ushers will collect the containers uh, as they walk up the row after we pray together. But thank you for giving. This is our first Sunday. We also talk about missions. And this is one of the things that I'm thankful for that uh, the Lord continues to work. He, he's helped us through these months that we were down. The Lord used you and your giving to help sustain us. We praise God for that. Uh, we praise God that we also are givers to our mission fields, and we support wonderful missionaries in this church in, uh, in Iraq area, in, uh, in India, in the children's home we support, and also in Central America with Brother Melton. So we have some wonderful areas that we're reaching into and seeing people saved and drawn. And so if you would like to help support our missionaries today, you can write that on your offering envelope missions, and you can put that in the container as well. Uh, as we uh, just um, celebrate the fact that the Lord's moving uh, in mighty ways all across this world. People are being saved, and, and even though we're in a pandemic, this is a, an opportunity for us to reach out, share with others about how Jesus saves, and, uh, and meet people, amen, at the point of their need, seeing that they need Jesus in their life, amen. Uh, let's pray together this morning and ask the Lord to bless our offering. And then uh, we're going to have uh, Pastor Anthony come and Pastor Danae, they're going to share in their GT Kids time. Amen. How about Brother Carl? Would you pray today for us, brother? Lord, I thank you, God, for allowing us to be in your house of worship today. Lord, Heavenly Father, when we need to be so close. Lord, Heavenly Father, to spread your, your love above all of us, Lord, Heavenly Father, as, as we go through a couple of our people, Lord, Heavenly Father. Lord, that that we come together, Lord, as it's supposed to be, Lord, Heavenly Father, as your word, we're supposed to command and come together, Lord, Heavenly Father. And what better Sunday to do it, Lord, Heavenly Father, as we get two of our own back, Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Now we come to the part of this service to where we give back to you, Lord, Heavenly Father, so that we can have this beautiful church Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, Heavenly Father, have our brothers and sisters all together again, Lord, Heavenly Father, as they come in one by one, Lord. I feel this much in my heart, Lord, Heavenly Father. We praise your name, Lord, Heavenly Father. We ask it in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Carl. Thank you for giving today. Pastor Anthony, you want to give? Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's doing good this morning. We've had a great worship service. Amen. Amen. A couple of announcements that are coming up uh, this week, uh, starting Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, we're going to do prayer at the door. Uh, for some of you who haven't been here, what that means is uh, instead of coming here to the church to pray at 9 a.m., we're asking that you guys will pray at your homes, at your door, uh, and so that you would just join us all together and pray for the needs of our church and for our families and pray for blessing uh, for us and our community as well. And then on Wednesday, or I'm going ahead of myself, I'm sorry, uh, that same day on Tuesday at uh, 7 o'clock, we have GT Fit Live. It'll be on Facebook. And so I know some of you you guys have been on there uh, trying to get some exercising going and cardio and some dancing. And so that will be taking place Tuesday at 7 o'clock on Facebook. And uh, if you don't know uh, how to get to that, uh, just text uh, Pastor Janae and she can get you there. On that same night at 8 o'clock, the youth will get together uh, for uh, the group FaceTime. 
and uh, games there. And then Wednesday at 6 p.m., we'll be back together for Pastor Talk at 6 p.m. And I know last week was a little bit weird with some of our internet issues, but we did get that ironed out. And so it should be uh, back to business as usual uh, this Wednesday. And so if you missed us, you'll get to see us this Wednesday. And then uh, also, I'm trying to remember where there's, I think there's one more th- announcement this week. I don't know. I guess uh, we'll be back together at Sunday at 11 a.m. I always have, I always get this fear I'm forgetting something, and I find out later. So, I'm, I'm, but right now we're going to switch over to uh, GT Kids. Yes. So I always tell our kids on Sunday morning when we're having GT Kids, what is the best place to be at on Sunday? That's church, right? We always say GT Kids, the best place to be is in the house of the Lord. There's no better place to be at on Sunday than gathering together, worshiping the Lord, and filling his presence. Amen? Amen. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. So uh, all of my kids, if you don't have your uh, packet at the mailbox every Sunday when you come in, you can pick that up and you can use that to follow along while I'm talking and when Pastor Brian's preaching and ask you questions about the worship service. So we want you to make sure you have one of those. But this is a very special time where you guys get to uh, do our summer series that we're having together. So we talked about sunglasses and we've talked about sandcastles and we've talked about beach balls. And today we're talking about a jump rope, okay? So we're going to talk about a jump rope today, and uh, Pastor Anthony, will you grab me one of those jump ropes over there, please? You can hand me the green one. It's the biggest. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so here's what I want to say. How many of you have ever jump roped before ever in your life? Yes! Lots of expert jump ropers, right? Okay, so so <laughs> you didn't know when you raised your hand that's what you were going to get called, right? So here's what I'm going to show you guys how good I am at jumping rope while I'm talking, okay? Here we go. You think I'm doing a good job of jumping rope while I'm talking? Is this how you jump rope while you talk? You know, it doesn't work very good. Why is it not working very good? Because I have the jump rope in one hand, and a microphone in the other hand, okay? So it makes it a little bit hard to jump rope without both of your hands, right? It's very hard to jump rope. Now, I could have many different things in this hand. I could have a cup of water in this hand. I could have a tablet or a cell phone in this hand, right? Anything that I have in my hand is preventing me from jumping rope. Now, I said I'm going to jump rope. I have the jump rope. I want to jump rope. And I'm jumping and I have the rope, but it's not going how it's supposed to go because I'm not using both of my hands. So here's what I want to tell you. When you don't use everything you have for the Lord, you're not really doing Christian right, okay? You're not really doing Jesus right. So you can say, I got saved, woohoo! That's the best day of your whole life, right? Right? But that doesn't mean that you're going to get to live the rest of your life following Jesus unless you put everything you have into following him. Everything. Both your hands. Hold both your hands in the air. You need both of them following Jesus. Both hands. Okay? So I'm going to read this verse, and then I'm going to try to see if I can be better at jumping rope after I read this verse from the Bible. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, it says, No one can serve... Yeah, some of your people in this church know that verse a lot. So now it's your turn to memorize that. No one can serve two masters because you will hate one and you will love the other one. You can't do two things at the same time and do them both 100%. You can't. You can't do two things. How many of you ever do your homework while watching a show? Anybody do that? Might not work out so good for your homework, right? Might not. How many of you, this is my favorite. Joshua, he likes to beatbox while he does reading. Now, I'm not sure how that works, right? I'm not sure how you can beatbox and read. It makes it kind of hard to do two things at one time. So God wants all of you for himself. He wants all of you. He doesn't want half of you. He wants all of you. And the other verse is in James chapter 4 and verse 7. And it says this. It says, give yourself completely to God. Completely. Can you guys say that word? completely. That means every bit of yourself, you're going to give it to God. And so just like when you guys ever joined something, maybe you joined a soccer team, or maybe you joined a dance class, or you joined something, and you were part of it, and the first day they give you like a uniform, or they give you something, and all of a sudden you get so excited, 
But if you never put it on and you never practice and you never do it, then you're not really a soccer player, right? Or you're not really a dancer. You have to keep doing those things. And so you got saved and you asked Jesus into your life. And that is wonderful. But now we have to put everything else aside. Right? Say, put down the mic. Right? We got to put everything else aside. And use all that we have to what? To jump for the Lord. That's your job today is to say, I'm going to give God everything I have, everything. So we're going to pray together, and then our dancers are going to come, our praise team is going to come, and we're going to sing together, right? And we're going to rejoice together. We want all the GT kids to stand too in just a minute. But you guys, adults can stand and sing with us if you want. But right now we're going to pray. So put your hand on your heart, both hands if you can, because I can't get my second one because I'm back to the microphone, right? But I want us to pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for every one of these kids that are here today. And I thank you, Lord, that today they experience a move of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, every promise that you have given to these kids through the Holy Spirit, through your word, through speaking in tongues, messages, Father God, for this generation, let them serve you with everything they have, Lord. As these kids place both of their hands upon their heart, it is a symbol, God, that they're giving you everything they've got. They're going to give everything they have every day. Not just on Sundays are they going to think about you, God. But they're going to think about you on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. They're going to give their entire lives to you, Lord. We believe that in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hey, thank you all. Amen. Amen. Well, what, great, uh, what a great morning we've had here so far. And uh, as we uh, get ready to open our Bibles today, I, I want to just uh, take you for a moment into the book of Hebrews chapter 11, because uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, you know, what we look for in this world, we can't find in this world. And we're never fully at home in this world because as Christians, we're not of this world. And so we will never find what we're looking for in this world. We will never, uh, we will, we actually, we have to say this world is not our home. And so we can't feel at home in this world. And so the, the scripture today in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it talks to us about uh, the heroes of faith. It goes through there and it talks about, uh, it talks about uh, uh, Noah and Enoch and it goes down the list and it comes to a point where it starts talking about Abraham. And Abraham is the, they call him Father Abraham for a reason because he was the one that when God says, when God says, will you go to a land that I'm calling you to? Will you go where I'm sending you? Uh, he, didn't, he didn't say, well, where's it at? How far is it? What's it going to be like? He just said yes to the Lord. He packed up his belongings and he went looking for city whose author and maker was God. And God says, because you respond, there's going to be faith uh, in your life because you've responded. I see that. And it's by faith that pleases God. And so he says, see the sand? Your descendants is like the sand. See the stars? Your descendants are going to be like the stars. See the promise of God comes to him that everyone that blesses him will be blessed and everybody that curses him will be cursed. And this is the promise that God made because uh, Abraham in faith said yes. So let me read to you Hebrews chapter 11, starting in verse 8. If you're able, you can stand with me as I read it. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was called out to go up to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. And by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of with him of the same promise, for he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Let's pray today. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, that when we come together in this place today, that, Lord, we can receive your word. We can, uh, we can put that into our hearts, God. We draw close to you in this place. Now, Father, I just ask that you would move, minister, and bless our time here today. In Jesus' name, amen. I mean, you may be seated this morning. All right. So looking, finding what we're looking for in this world. Sometimes we go on a mission to find something. You know, uh, for months, uh, things have been closed, right? Because of the virus and different things going on. And, and they've shut things down and things slowly begin to open up. And so you're on a mission to go find something. It's been harder than normal to find it, right? Uh, it's, been, it's been closed. It's been delayed. Uh, it's not been able to uh, make it on time. There's different reasons because we're trying to go find what we need. Well, we can't find it in this world. We tried to go find bathroom necessities. It's all out. You can't find toilet paper anywhere for weeks and weeks and weeks because people hoarding it, right? And they just stocked up and, and the supply chain couldn't make it. You, you, you couldn't find water for a while. You couldn't find that. You can't find cleaners. You can't find different things. And then, you, then one by one, you start seeing the people that have it. They, you start hearing stories. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's charge $70 for a bottle of hand sanitizer, right? And then next thing you know, well, they come after them for doing that. And so then they donate it all the way. And, and so there's different things that happen uh, when you go looking for something you can't find. And this is what happens. We can't find what we need in this world. And the only way we can find what we need is to know that our foundation is set. Our foundation, first and foremost, is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when we go looking to this world and groups and people and politicians and different things in this world, society will let you down every time. 
you will never fully find validity of what you need. There will still remain a darkness in your heart. You can live on Park Avenue, but you know they're still having struggles with depression, and they're still having struggles uh, uh, in their lives. If you live on if you live on Park Avenue, or if you're down at a homeless shelter, wherever you're at, you can face these different things. So just your area and locale doesn't mean that your life necessarily is better. You're still facing different things. Now, some of us would say, I'd like to try to get better. You know, there's nothing wrong with trying to get better in your life. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can't find what you need. We need the will of God operating in our life. And you can't find that just by looking in this world. The will of God wants to set you on fire and set you on course to help you in this world. You know what this world needs right now? This world needs people who are set on fire by the word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it would, and people that get set on fire, that find the will of God, that have Jesus in their life, these people that find this fire and allow it to consume them, it, it be, makes us part of the family. It makes us part of the family of God, the kingdom of God. And then what happens when we're part of the family in the kingdom. We can understand that we're all part of the family together. And so right there, being in the family of God, it cures every kind of ailment that we need uh, when you look into the world recently and see riots and over racism and prejudices. If we would just be consumed with Holy Spirit fire, it would stop all this unnecessary things that are going on. It will cure it. People are protesting and, they're, and they're, people have the every right to do it. People have every right to go out and say they stand against things. We as a church stand against all kinds of things every day. And it's a right to be able to say what we stand against, what we stand for. But the problem when it comes to prejudices and racisms in our life is that we are trying to find validity in something that we'll never, we'll never find it in. But what we need is we need to allow the Holy Spirit to consume consume us and set us on fire, get fire in our bones. And that will stop every kind of prejudices that we hold in your heart. And then you start feeling your old self start creeping up inside there. You just can repent about that because that's wrong in Jesus name, right? And so we're looking for things in this world to help us and we're not finding it. But one lasting find is when we understand that Jesus is the answer for my life and your life and this whole world world's life, then it changes our perspective on things. And we can love one another and we can, and we can be in church together and we can be part of the family of God together. And, and we look through life and we say, I wish there was some kind of magic satellite that they sent up. They talk about trackings and 5G and all that, but why don't they send a magic satellite up in the air that can point us into the right direction for the way in which we're to go? And it would be so much easier if we had some kind of direction. But as a child of God, we have a direction. We have a path. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a leading of the Lord. He says the righteous footsteps are ordered of him. He guides and leads our life. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful that he does that for us? Amen. You know, sometimes this is what we go. And there's validity in all these points. But think about this. When we're trying to find what we need, sometimes we like to do the Moses, the Moses' method. The Moses method is say, God, you just come to me in a burning bush and then I can know what to do and I'll do it for you. But, but sometimes he doesn't appear to us in the burning bush, does he? Uh, sometimes we say, where's the great earthquake? God, just speak to me. This is the Elijah one. He goes, where's the earthquake? But it says his voice wasn't in that. Where's the fire? Where's the wind? Where's the, all the waves? Where's all this other stuff? But he says it was in the still small voice where you find it. So sometimes it's not found by astonishing miracle, not by God being able to send a bush on fire, but yet not consumed. It may happen. It happened before. It could happen again, but it's not uh, for us if we're just waiting for it to happen. Moses wasn't necessarily sitting back and waiting for it to happen. God was God was talking to him through it. And so uh, we look at the Moses method, or sometimes we say, if I could just do the Gideon method. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll send fleeces out here. Uh, here, let me put this up. If it's uh, wet on top and dry on the bottom, that means you're ready for me to do it. Maybe if it's, 
It comes back and it's wet on top and dry on the bottom. That's still not good enough. Maybe if I say, okay, maybe if it's dry on top, wet on the bottom, it's good. Maybe if, I, maybe if it's over here and it's over there and I put it on top of the car and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to try to look for it over here in the side corner over here. And if somehow it gets from on top of here to this side corner, then I know that's what you want me to do. And I'll go do it, Lord. And guess what? Uh, this is the fleeces that Gideon can put out. It's the fleeces we put out and we look for ways for us to find God's will, to follow his will, to find what we're looking for in this world. And sometimes we use the methods of Moses. Sometimes we use the methods of Gideon. Sometimes we, we use the open door method. Well, God puts an open door in our path. Let's step through it. And uh, let's say, Lord, every opportunity, we're going to make the most of it. Because the Bible says he's put before us an open door. This is what he told to the church in Revelation. And we have to know that sometimes there's open doors put there, but by faith, he wants us to step through it. God came to Abraham with an open door, an open opportunity. They said, do you want to be blessed? Do you want to be great? Do you want to have favor in your life? And see, he presented the door, but Abraham had to step through the threshold. He had to say, yes, a lot of times we get to the point and God's saying to us in our life, uh, do you want this to happen? Do you need that? Do you need favor? Do you need that uh, in your life? Do, here's your open door. And we can say yes to it. But sometimes we forget that we have to step through the threshold. So thus I'm sharing this morning is that by faith it says Abraham he sojourned to the city. He was looking for a city. He said yes to God. And he went out on the trip of his lifetime to go find the city whose maker, whose foundation was maker, was God. And so what he was trying to say is sometimes though we like to say, Lord, let's kind of shortcut this thing. Let's kind of shortcut it. And if we can shortcut it to find what your will is, to find what we need in this world, then it can speed up the process, right? Let's shortcut it. But sometimes God says, I've got to take you on a path to get you to a place where I can mold you and make you and have you ready as the vessel to be used by, you, by, by the Lord. So for us, we can say, I wish things would hurry up. You know, when we looked at 2020, we said, there's going to be a whole bunch of great things going to happen. We're going to look at 2020 in such a great way and a great manner. And we feel like, God, this is the way in which you've got planned for us. And then all of a sudden, boom, coronavirus hits, right? Nobody was thinking about that. And then it messes everybody's plans up. But what, what we wish is we wish that we had a flux capacitor. You know what a flux capacitor is? If you've seen a movie, you know what a flux capacitor is. And, and uh, a flux capacitor, a time machine, right? And we said, let's go back in time and tell ourselves back then what we need to know today so that when we come to today, we could have told ourselves, let's be ready because this is coming our way. And it doesn't always work out good that way, does it? It doesn't always work out that way. I mean, there are no flux capacitors. There is no going back in time. I mean, if we went to 1990 and I told my, and I told my young self in 1990 what, what I was going to experience in 2020, what in the world good would that have done? You know, uh, uh, how good would that have done? I could have I said, we rebuked that devil. He rebuked that devil. That's all he could do, right? But, but, it, but what we're looking for, there's no short circuits. We try, but we have to say what we're looking for, we can't find. But watch what happened. In Hebrews 11, verse 13, it goes on and tells all the stories about the different people in the hall of faith. And it says, these all died in faith. They all died in faith, having faith having not received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims of this earth. You know, that should, we should never stop the hope from stirring inside of us of the promise that we've been given, the promise of heaven that we've been given through Jesus Christ, the promise of God that he's given to us in our families, in our church, uh, uh, for us and for each other. We should never get to the place where we see them as afar off. But they saw them. 
In faith, they seen them. In faith, they looked for them. And in faith, they embraced them. And they were persuaded by them. They said, yes, it's coming. They're looking for them. They're believing they're coming. They embraced them. And they said, in this world, we're pilgrims and we're strangers. But the promise is that it's coming and I shall see it. Just like Job, he says, even though my body dies, yet with my own eyes will I see my Savior. Because I know that my Redeemer lives and that when he stands on this earth I shall see him for myself. I know my redeemer lives today. Amen. And so he had, they had faith in their heart to say they had faith in the heart to say that the promise that's been given is the promise they're living and they're persuaded by. Sometimes we're so easily persuaded we we want to start out with the door God gives us but we hear you can't do that, or it's not that door, or we hear, other, we hear other voices around us, and those other voices so easily distract us, right? They easily distract us from getting to where God wants us to be and wants us to go. And sometimes it's good intentions of others. Sometimes it's the adversary. Some, there's a host of reasons why they happen, but nonetheless, they happen. But these were ones who had the promise of God in their heart. They died in faith, not receiving them, but they were persuaded of them. And they embraced them. And they confessed that. They said that they knew the promise and no one could persuade them otherwise. They embraced it and were persuaded by it. So for us, how do we live in this world today? We live in this world persuaded and embraced that God has a will and a plan for each of us. That God has a will and a purpose for us in this year. That God has a will and a place for us. That even though we walk in this world, we're not of this world. We're strangers and pilgrims on this earth. But still God yet has a plan for us. Uh, and we're going to walk in that plan. And if we look for his plan in this earth, we're never going to find it. Because we're strangers on this earth. And so you're not going to find what you need in your spirit out in the world. That's what, that's what he said. This is what the scripture is reminding us of. And so where do we find the will of God? The will of God. Well, Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says this, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name given under heaven and among men, whereby we must be saved. See, the plan of God for us that we're looking for is to realize that it starts in him. The, it starts in Jesus. When we realize that we, have that we have that need for him first, we submit our life to him and we let him lead us, then that road can open before us and God can minister to us. I want you to look at Isaiah with me. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. It says this, it says, whether you turn to the right, you shall, with thine ears, you'll hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right and when you turn to the left, what is it saying? He says, with your ear, you will hear the word and you will be able to turn and turn the right or left and you'll say, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. It goes back to the point that God orders the footsteps of the righteous we want to know the direction we're supposed to walk. We want to know the way in which we're to walk. Let's listen for his voice and say, this is the way, walk in it. So we want to find the will of God in our life. We need to understand Jesus is the beginning. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the only one who can give us life, who will set our path on it. Then after we have our path set on him, then we can believe that the spirit of God will lead us. And it says, here's the path. Walk in this way. Walk after this manner. And see, this is what Abraham did. He was called to go to a city that he had never seen. He left. He picked up his tents. He, well, he dwelt in tents along the way as a stranger with a promise of expectation, looking for the city which God was building. You know what he was doing? He was not conforming to the world. You will never find what you need conforming in this world. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove the good and acceptable, perfect 
will of God. What we need to find in our life, we never find in the world by conforming to what the world's doing. But when we search Jesus, you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. And when you, when you say, I want to conform to the likeness of the Son of God, what happens then, he renews your mind, transforms your mind, and then here comes the will of God that you can walk in his will, his way. So look at the will of God, his will. God leads us many ways. How, how can we find his will? Well, the first way you find his will is by looking at the Bible. You hide his word in your heart so you don't sin against him. So we look in the scripture, uh, Psalm 119, verse 105, your word's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You want to find the will of God? We have his word. It's a collection. It gives to us life. So we need to open up the word of God and put it inside of us so that we can know the way in which we're to live. He's given us the Bible. He leads us through his word. He leads us to find the will of God, to find what we need in this world. He finds us through his word. He leads us through the Holy Spirit. He gives us promptings of the Holy Spirit. He gives us discernment from the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 16, verse 9. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord directs his steps. The Lord determines his steps in life. So what we're looking for, we can never find in this world. But when we look to the Lord, when we read his word and trust the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will determine and direct your footsteps in your life. He leads us through his word. He leads us through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. He leads us by good godly people. You're never meant to be out there all by yourself without having some good godly people around you. Because Psalm chapter one, verse one says this, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So one way you will know his will his will is if you walk in the counsel of the ungodly, you are not walking in the will of God and you will never find what you need in this world to make it in this world. If you stand in front of sinners and make your bed with sinners like that, you will never find the will because his will is to do this. Bless is a man who dwells in the counsel of the ungodly. If you are dwelling in the counsel of ungodly people, then that's the advice you're gonna receive. And and what's eventually put into us uh, is we're going to, out of that abundance of our heart then, we're going to spew and we're going to talk and we're going to share things that we've been taught. And it's going to be by the counsel of the ungodly. But when we get into the counsel of the godly, there will we find blessing from God to lead us. So we need godly people in our life. So never turn away from people who you feel can give you this good godly advice. And then the fourth way he leads us is he leads us through the assurance of peace from God. So the peace of Jesus, Colossians chapter three, verse 15, let the peace of Jesus Christ rule in your heart. Since as members, you're of one body, you are called to be ye thankful, called to peace. So in the scripture, we're called to be thankful, called to have peace, called to be peace. It only comes through Jesus Christ. We want the peace of God in our life. We want the will of God leading us and directing us. We need to allow God to, to work in our hearts. He said, let the peace of God rule in your heart. If we don't have a submissive heart to say, Lord, I want you to lead me in this world, then we won't find what we're looking for. But watch what Jesus, Jesus said this in Luke chapter 10, verse nine. This is the works of Jesus here. Jesus says, if you go about finding answers in this world, you will not find it because this world is broken, is decaying, is dying. You can only find answers in Jesus. And Jesus said this, he said, heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, that God, God is living in his kingdom. He says, now the kingdom of God's come nigh 
to you. So we want to have the kingdom. We want to be part of this family. We want to be part of this kingdom. Then what happens is he says, this is what my kingdom's like. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. It's not like a standard kingdom that we're used to seeing. It's not like you're at King Arthur's table and he's invited you to come and sit. It's not like Daniel being called up to the Babylonian king's table and all these people there are eating and drinking and then the Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they, uh, they didn't want to eat the king's table food. They, they wanted to eat the vegetables. They want to eat the different food. And, uh, and what happened? It's not being called to the king's table. It's not a matter of eating and drinking, meat and drink. But if you want to know what the kingdom of God is, the kingdom of God is righteousness, right? Standing with Jesus, his righteousness being imputed to us uh, because by faith we receive him as Savior and Lord and we follow him. It's righteousness. It's peace. Peace that passes understanding because we have a submissive heart to say, God, let your peace rule in my life and joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy. There's so many people that live in this world not having joy and not, you know, happy times come and go. There's so many happy feelings that we feel. We can, we can be given a gift. We can see family. You can do different things. And they conjure up all kinds of feelings of happiness for a moment or all kinds of other feelings for that temporary feelings. But what happens is when it comes down to it, one bad thing that happens to us, it's like we forget about every kind of happy thought that we've ever had. And we're back at looking, saying we can't find what we need in this world because only bad things happen to us, right? That's what we feel. But what God's reminding us is if we are part of his kingdom, if we are part of his family, then it's righteousness and it's peace and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. And the joy of the Holy Ghost is a fruit of the Spirit. And it's not by accident when the apostle writes out what the fruit of the Spirit is. It's love and it's joy, and it's peace. You know, the, there's nine fruits of the Spirit he outlines for us. But he starts with love. Love, joy, and peace. If we would allow the Lord, we're searching in this world for happiness. We're searching in this world for joy. We're searching for a way in which to walk. We're searching, we're searching. But if we allow love and joy and peace of the Holy Spirit, to develop and envelop us, uh, it changes, it changes us. And even though we go through the same circumstances that everybody else in this world faces, what happens is you've still got joy in your heart. Joy in your heart. We face, we face pandemics with joy in our hearts, knowing that the Lord has it in his hand. We face losing loved ones, with joy in our hearts, still grieving, still sorrow, all these same feelings, but not like people that have no hope, but with people that have hope. Because the hope is this, that the joy of the Lord gives me strength to continue on because I know that our family, our friends, our loved ones, our church fellow church members here, They've moved on from this earth to a, new, to a new presence of the Lord, seeing Jesus face to face. They, they took up a new residence, and, and so we can have hope in our life that. See, they, we have to understand when you look at the beginning of Hebrews chapter, chapter uh, uh, of Hebrews, we see that it says that by faith, God formed the world. And so we just trust that God, who formed this world, is leading us and guiding us and he will give us strength to make it in this world. And we will see loved ones again because what happens is it's the joy and the peace and the love of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside believers that help us each and every day. You will never find it looking for it in the world. A Twitter hashtag won't mean anything. It won't help. A Facebook post doesn't help. It doesn't do anything but take up time and cause arguments, right? It doesn't help for uh, uh, posts and all these different things that we can do because we're not going to find what we need. What we need is only found in Jesus Christ. And we have to understand that the idea of God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven, just like when Jesus 
taught his disciples to pray because he said, Lord, teach us to pray like John's disciples prayed. He said, say this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so here's a brand new idea that maybe some of us will hear for the first time, but God's will, God has a will for us in heaven. He wants us to walk in that will on the earth. He wants us to walk in his will on the earth. And we can pray that way. God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when we pray that way, when we pray that way, what we're saying is God, use me. Because we're talking about people here. Jesus uses people. And so when we say, God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, it's not talking about the grass outside. It's not talking about the water in the lakes. Uh, He's talking about me and you. When we pray, God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, what we're saying is, Lord, let your will be manifested in me so I can walk it in this earth just like what your will is in for heaven for us. And so use me. Is there anybody in here that will say, yes, Lord, I want to be used by you today? Is there anyone today that will say, yes, Lord, use me for your glory today? See, the Lord desires for a spirit to fall on us, just like the water covers the sea. He says there's going to be a glory of the Lord that comes and covers the temple of the believers here. And we're going to be filled with his goodness and filled with his mercy. And we're going to say, God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Use us for your glory. My final scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, it says this, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. But in power. The kingdom of God is powerful. The Holy Spirit, when they're talking in Acts chapter 1 about the power of the Spirit coming, the word power is translated into a word dunamis, which is a dynamic power that is, a, that is a force that has to be reckoned with. The kingdom of God is just not all in talk. It's just not all in just word only, but it is in power. And see, this is the difference between the church and every other kind of society you're looking for in this world. See, every other type of society, every other type of uh, group or everything we're trying to find validity in in this world, it's all in talk only. It's all in word. It's, it's all in what they can give you. These other religions of the world, it's all about what kind of works you're going to do so that you can find a place and have some kind of good karma when you die or something, yada, yada. And this is what they find. But for us, they say the kingdom of God is not in word only. It's not just about talk because what it is, is it's about having faith rise up in you. And he says, when there's preachers preaching, when me and you speak the word of God, the Holy Spirit is the convictor of men's hearts. And when you begin to speak the word of God, what happens is something powerful, something dynamic, something supernatural begins to happen and it stirs up people's hearts. And when they hear a word preached, it causes people to say, yes, I need what you found. And how did I find it? But I found it in Jesus. And that's our testimony today when we allow our words to be his words flowing through us. It's not just in word only, but it's in power. There is an experience that happens to us when we say yes to Jesus. When we say yes to him, our lives are changed. His kingdom, we're part of a kingdom that's just not all talk, but it is power, folks. It is power. When Jesus comes to earth again, he's coming in power. When the rapture of the church happens, it's coming in power. When when Jesus comes back and institutes a thousand years of peace, it's going to happen in power. Because politicians, you see them all talking, they can't do anything, right? They They can't stir peace for a thousand years up. I mean, they can't agree on anything. But when one word from Jesus stepping his foot down from heaven to earth, all of a sudden, 
It's going to be peace. And it's going to be peace. Uh, the devil's been rampant in our life, but a word from Jesus when he comes, he says, there shall be peace. That devil will be bound and he will be, he will be thrown into that bottomless pit. One word from Jesus brings powerful peace. It's exactly what you need. It's exactly what I need. It's what this world needs to know. It's a word in power, supernatural power. And when we submit to him, our experience happens. And our experience is powerful. And it's no denying. It's how we can be fully persuaded. And it's how we can embrace. And so how did Abraham fully be persuaded and embrace? Because he had an experience. In the kingdom of God, God speaking to Abraham, not in talk only, but in power. And he fully embraced it. He was persuaded and he said yes. And this morning when we say yes to the Lord, he changes our lives forever. Amen. Amen. So this morning I'm going to have our musicians make their way back up here to the front. And I want to pray with you that we be endued with this power. That when we talk and share our testimony. The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. And so when we can use that for the glory of Jesus, there will be a power that comes from us that will be supernatural. When you begin to share your testimony with people, they will hear those words and it will strike their heart. See, Jesus has made it so in his kingdom that as we talk to each other, as we, as we share with each other, these words touch our hearts and it makes us realize that we need him. We need him. We're nothing without him. He's all that we need. And if we're searching for things in this world to help fill voids, we're going to keep on looking. You're going to keep on looking and you're never going to find. But if you found Jesus, he's ordering your steps. He's performing miracles in your life. He's going to help you to reach people, not in word only, but in power. I want you to bow your heads with me this morning. And I want us to pray together today because there's many people looking for what we have. The Holy Spirit that reigns in us, many people need that. There's a darkness in this world, but there is a light of Jesus that shines bright in the darkness. We need it. We need it. We need it. We need to share it. He's called the church to be the city on the hill that cannot be hid. Are you part of that family today? Then let's share that testimony because it's powerful today. And it's going to help people that are looking for something. They don't know what they're looking for. They're out looking for something here and there. They're just looking. But when they hear your words, it's not your words. It's the Holy Spirit through you speaking those words. You will find an experience that changes their life. And I wanna be a person that just says, yes, Lord. You've set before us an open door. Help us to step through it. Help us to make this next six months a more powerful even than the first. Help us to make the last half of 2020 greater than the first. Help us to make the last years, Father, even greater than those prior. Help us, Lord, to walk in your way. Lord, we want your perfect will operating in us. Use us for your glory. Lord, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, fill us on earth as you desire it to be as in heaven. Use us for your glory on earth as it is in heaven. We say yes, Lord, to you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for these here today. And I pray, Lord, this morning that, Lord, that we just reach out to you. And Lord, you use us for your glory. I thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. 
I thank you for, Father, how you're holding us in your hand. And Lord, we praise you today because Lord, we found what we're looking for in you. And Lord, I thank you that we're gonna share it in this world, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord, we thank you today for that word. Church, would you just lift your hands with me and let's just take a moment. I'm gonna have them sing this chorus. And I just want you to lift up your hands before we do communion. And I want you to just say, Lord, I'll be your instrument. Use me, Lord. Lead, guide, and direct. Lord, where you send, I'll go. Let's just take 30 seconds while they sing that verse. And let's sing it together before, as we pray. This morning, you should have uh, got a communion here. And if you just take that first layer off, you will see that uh, there's a uh, piece of unleavened bread there. Let's take that together and hold it. The Bible says that as they were in the upper room, as they were in that last supper, having that Passover meal, that the Lord took bread and he broke it. And he said, take eat all of it. For this is my body, which is given for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. So today let's pray. What are we doing when we do communion? Well, Paul says, we do show the Lord's death till he comes. This is a symbol. This is an ordinance, an act of us reminding ourselves that Jesus came from heaven to earth to be our savior, to be our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. And as we eat this bread, what we're reminding ourselves is Jesus is the bread of life that's come down from heaven. And we thank and we thank God each and every day for the work that Jesus has done on the cross. So let's bless this bread together. Father, I thank you for the bread. The communion bread represents the body of Christ. It reminds us, Jesus, that you left the glories of heaven and you came to earth to be our sacrifice for our sin. And Lord, today as we eat this bread, we thank you, Lord, that we can stand in this place knowing that you're our Savior and you're our guide. You're our director. You're our leader. 
and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's eat this bread together. And now you can peel the other part off and it's the juice. And as he passed the bread and then he took the cup, he gave thanks and he said, this is my blood which is shed for you for the remissions of sin. It's the new covenant that we now celebrate. Hebrews tells us that Jesus is better. That's the whole key through the whole book. Better. Blood sacrifices, but Jesus' blood is better. Make an animal sacrifice, but Jesus' blood is better. How do we make it in this world? Through Jesus' blood. Jesus, our high priest, is better. The Israelites had a high priest and had rabbis and had priests, but Jesus is better. And he's better. And as we celebrate him, he was gave his life for us. And now as we drink this cup of juice, it reminds us that Jesus is better. And because he gave his life, now we all have life together today. And we're looking forward to his coming again. Amen. Let's pray over this cup. Father, I thank you for this cup. This cup reminds us that Jesus, you're better. Father, better than any other way that there ever has been or ever will be. Jesus, you are better. And Lord, as we drink this cup today, we're mindful and thankful. And we celebrate the fact that by your blood, we have remission of sin. We enter into your family of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So Lord, today as we drink this cup, we drink it in joy and not in pain. We drink it in peace and not in pain. We drink it in righteousness and not in pain, knowing that you, Father, are our Heavenly Father, that Jesus, you are our Savior, that you've given us the Holy Spirit in this world and that you are coming again to receive us to your own, Father, very quickly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's drink this cup together. Amen. Before we dismiss, would you just lift your hands with me? And let's just thank him that he invites us to remember his death until he comes. Lord, I thank you today that we have those watching online, those in the service, that God, that we've been able to share the word been able to praise you together and now God I ask today that as we go out together today that Father we go out in peace and joy and love that Father we're mindful of the word that's been placed in us is power and not just talk so Lord help us to demonstrate that oh I thank you Lord the Apostle Paul didn't come in eloquent words, but in demonstration of the Spirit. And I thank you, Lord, we've got believers in here full of the Spirit and are going to demonstrate your power of your word this week. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you all. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for joining us if they're watching online. We hope you have a wonderful day today. Be ready for Wednesday night, 6 o'clock online. We're going to have pastor talk. We pray you have a wonderful day. And any news of any upcoming coming things about the uh, Brewer family or the Silva family will pass along as we know. God bless you all. Have a good day. And we'll see you online Wednesday night.
it must have been when JC when he was first born around then because that's Jessica and I think are Jessie's kids all the time. Mm -hmm. That was like one of our favorite songs because we like rocked it. It's so powerful. 